Who is Houston Jones? Am I simply a man who gets hurt on the internet for the education and entertainment of others? Or is there more to me than meets the eye? To answer this question, I will be asked a series of increasingly deeper and thought-provoking questions while inhaling medicinal herbs, which are completely legal recreationally in the state of Michigan that I live in and in no way violate the YouTube community guidelines. The truth is almost no content creator is fully themselves on camera. And we oftentimes take on personas and act in a way that we believe will be most entertaining to our audience. So inhaling medicinal herbs should help me forget any on-screen persona I instinctively take on and help dissolve my ego to give you all a better and deeper understanding of what goes on inside my head. What does go on inside your head? Well, they're about to find out. Good. <laughs> so here's how we're gonna do this experiment. As you can see, we got Jake over here who will be asking me questions. But before every question, I need to take a hit out of the even still completely legal smoke machine. Now, Jake, can you explain to everyone the structure of the questions? Of course. So we're gonna start with some basic easy peasy questions for Houston and then move on to some higher level complex questions as the experiment goes further on. Okay, so essentially, I'll be getting some of the easier surface level questions when I'm less stoned and the more deeper thought provoking ones, the more stoned I am. Correct. We want your uh, ego to be peeled away uh, as yes. we start getting into the deeper stuff. I do not have much of a tolerance, uh, so I don't think it's gonna take a lot for me to get stony baloney in this video. <laughs> Full disclosure, me either. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're not smoking. <laughs> Damn. So Jake, should I take my first hit of the medicinal herbs? You may. Let's okay. begin. Let us commence this experiment. <sighs> oh, that was a good one. Yeah, yeah, the def it definitely worked. Um, okay, starting off strong. Give me a softball. Give me a softball one first. A yeah. Softball? Yeah, a nice easy one. I know we have a lot of anime fans out there, and mm -hmm. I'm sure a lot of them want to know what your favorite anime is. Okay, okay. I got two. First one, One Punch Man. <laughs> Particularly season one. Why? Because that's what opened my eyes to the world of anime. Mm -hmm. I remember I was watching it, like pirated versions of it on YouTube, really sh quality and that made me go down a rabbit hole because that season was so like just different than anything i've seen in like western media i just loved it and that really started me down a slippery slope of watching every anime in existence that's the beginning of the mm -hmm, end for you mm -hmm. then next one attack on titan i love attack on titan i think i've watched it fully through like three times oh wow yeah reason being just really great storytelling you know a lot of twists and turns the genres of the show changes throughout every season it's just a, a quality show especially if you're into more well-written deeper thought-provoking stories okay because on the surface level it just looks like you know giant monsters eating people but yeah that's what i got out of yeah it. definitely but it once and i'll say it's a little bit more of a slow burn once you get into season two and especially season three i don't know how you can't be hooked at that point the way i explain it is like you know Remember when Game of, Game of Thrones was good? It's like that, but anime form. Oh, when times were great. When times, were, yeah, simpler times. <laughs> simpler times. Simpler times. Oh, I gotta take another hit. <laughs> yes, you do. Easy peasy. Uh. <sighs> How'd that one feel? Many of us know that you are a big time gym goer. Mm -hmm. I'm sure a lot of people would love to know your favorite muscle group or what you like to train the most, if you have one in particular. Yeah, I feel like that's a somewhat uh, common gym question, especially between gym bros. Oh yeah. Yeah, I think it's changed for me over the years. Obviously, initially, chest and triceps like everyone else, you know, of chest, tri shoulders. International chest day. Yeah, exactly. What what bro doesn't like train in their chest, you know? Gotta make the titties dance. Uh-huh. But, you know, especially like those first few years, my back started exploding. Mm -hmm. I have a really thick back and I really started to love back day for a while. I was like, became my favorite day, back and biceps, just cause I'm strong there genetically. Mm -hmm. You know, there's been times where I actually have appreciated doing legs and like deadlifting. Cause I turned out I was good at deadlifting. Right. I think just when you're decent at something, you would tend to like it a little bit more. I would agree. Yeah. I have that leg genetics, so uh -huh. leg day has always been very favorable for myself. Yeah, exactly. Uh, 
definitely right now I'm back on the the chest and triceps team, you know, <laughs> <laughs> bread and butter. Yeah, you know, it, I, I just, uh, I think that's the most enjoyable workout I do right now, but I still, still love doing some biceps, you know, legs kind of sucks right now because my front squatting disasters, but I really thought you would have said biceps, but biceps, I just, I think you got that. You know, that I got the peak, you right? got the peak. But who doesn't love training biceps? It's true. I do. I do like doing biceps. I, I definitely do like getting a nice bicep pump. But you know what, what pump I like more than a bicep pump? Tricep pump. Mm. Just because triceps are a, a bigger muscle group. So your arm looks even bigger. Right. Don't skip tricep. Day. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Even though people probably accuse me of skipping triceps because my biceps are so dominant and big. <laughs> the struggle will always exist. Can't win them all. You, can, you know, it'd be nice to have both bicep and tricep genetics just pure arm genetics there's a pure nothing. arm genetic <laughs> nothing else you're just a big old <laughs> meaty <arms>. arm guy <laughs> you're good larry the lobster yeah <laughs> just claws no Man, that actually sounds terrible <laughs> <laughs> i'll let uh, i'll take at least a little bit more even uh body parts <laughs> fair enough i feel like i did some little baby hits there those are baby questions okay so i'm gonna try a little bit get a bigger hit in on this one Oh no! No! <laughs> <coughs> that was a mistake. <coughs> oh, I might have to skip ahead. I don't know. That's not gonna be good. I might have to skip some questions. I don't know. <laughs> okay, that's, uh, this is where the Red Bull comes in. That's not gonna help. <laughs> it will help energize me. Pick me back up, you know? Okay. All right. We're gonna dive in just a little bit deeper. Okay. Now that we got the basics, soft stuff out of the way, those mm -hmm. easy peasy questions. I'm going to hit you with, uh, what is a memory from your childhood that you are particularly fond of? Uh, what, what, uh, how young childhood? Anywhere in your childhood. Okay. Um, I don't know. I was always really proud of becoming a, like a black belt at nine, which, you know, people say black belt, my kids can't be a black belt, but I was damn good. Okay. I was better than, uh, most adults doing, doing it then. Uh, but I just think I had a natural talent for martial arts and stuff like that. Uh, so I was really, I guess I was pretty proud of myself for throughout uh growing up and stuff that i achieved that at such a young age i'm just gonna hit, hit you with a gaming mode this might be early high school but halo 3 came out okay i went to the like got it the day of i beat the game in a day and then like a couple days later we all went over to mark's house brought our tvs our xboxes system link four or five in the morning playing four player legendary on the campaign and we beat it, that last little jump into the, the ship there on the Warthog. Oh, so glorious. I'll always remember that moment. <laughs> it's just so cool. You know, 5 a.m. where we just, we beat the Halo 4 on Legendary. It was great. I Loved can, it. I can get behind a core. Great gaming game. moment, right? Yeah, I can get behind core gaming moments. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know. I, it's, I think it's a shame. Kids will never experience the system link LAN parties. You know, they just get uh, the online experience now. But man... Something about getting all your friends together stuffed into a room or a couple rooms and just gaming all night. Uh, I think that's what made gaming really special to me. It was just growing up. We may have to do that again sometime. Yeah, bring it back. <laughs> bring land, back land parties 2023. Bring back land party. Uh-huh, uh-huh. That's what I'm talking about. We had a good memory, a good uh -huh. core memory. Mm -hmm. Let's uh, go to something slightly outside of that. What is your greatest fear? Okay, in terms of fears, I would say... I don't even like admitting this is a fear, but mice, I'm like, mice, uh, creepy crawly type stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, I've always been a big baby about that. Like, and I do blame my mother to some extent because every time she saw a mouse in the house, she'd jump on the furniture. <laughs> and then I think years of hearing that, you know, rubbed off on me. But weirdly enough, if it's like contained and in a cage, I have no problem touching bugs, snakes, spiders, my, mice, rodents. Something about the wild ones, man. They just freak me out. They just—I don't know where they're going. Uh, they're <laughs> fast, you know. Scary. Don't like it. Is that your greatest? I don't uh, greatest. I, I, I was gonna be like my easy surface level type fear thing. I'd say like dying alone. I think uh, a lot of times uh, over the years of doing YouTube, I have felt that. I'm sorry. My dog's biting the. <laughs> <in> my <ankle. laughs> I, uh, I have a very needy dog. If you guys haven't noticed, but. So what I was saying, dying alone. I've been doing YouTube for a long time. There's been a lot of stints in it that I have felt kind of lonely. I think a lot of it was just kind of me overthinking things a lot, but I just, there's, I felt in a way like no one, I had very few people that uh, could understand what I was doing, what I was going through. On the surface level, it just looks really awesome. And it is, I'm not gonna 
pretend it, it never hasn't been. It was hard for me to ever like talk and relate struggles that, you know, even my friends were going had going through because you know they work a nine to five job your day to day is totally different than mine and so i felt isolated in a lot of ways just because my life was drastically different just in my day to day and i didn't have i felt i didn't have a lot of people to talk to about it or that full, could fully understand you know not that people didn't try but it's hard if you don't you know walk in someone else's shoes right right yeah, and that that left me in periods of my life where i think i i did feel pretty pretty alone and uh, that's always made me kind of fearful of one day, you know, especially when all this YouTube stuff ends, uh, who's gonna who's gonna be left uh, type of deal, which is kind of a dark thought. <laughs> but I also had these thoughts when darker periods of my life. Yeah, and just general fear of the future. I think I've always been fearful of the future ever since, you know, high school got done and I was like, oh, you got to decide what you're going to do for the rest of your life. And that gave me, I don't want to say anxiety, but that's what it felt like to me. I was just like anxious, you know, lost, didn't know what to do. And the future kind of scared me. Even now, to some extent, it does. You know, especially doing YouTube, you don't know where the landscape's going to be in a few years from now. I think that's completely normal. And I know a lot of people have this fear of being alone. Um, to my understanding, we're social creatures and mm -hmm. we like to have people that have shared experiences or relatability because that allows us to be more open with those individuals so someone that's gone through the same struggles as you you know it shows you that you're not alone in this battle or that you mm -hmm. can experience yeah. the same things as far as not knowing the future i think that's another realistic fear um, and it's like a human condition i think to some extent it's just the way society has it set up for you to figure out what you're supposed to do for the mm -hmm. rest of your life in this uh, little five percent tile of your whole yeah, entire life yeah it's like it's crazy because yeah that that you're eight i was 17 when i was done i graduated high school i graduated high school young and you know suddenly i was like you got to make up your mind so i went to business school because i couldn't make up my mind yeah and that's always something i was always so grateful for youtube taking off for me because like i had no idea of what i would be doing now uh genuinely because I had real no aspirations uh, for professionally. And I guess I'm kind of spoiled in the aspect that I was able to find something that I actually genuinely enjoyed doing. I always stick by that at this point that it's better to do something that you enjoy doing, or at least decently and enjoy doing. Mm -hmm. And I know I as well had to go through the hard way of doing many jobs and many career changes before I found doing this. this yeah. <laughs> uh -huh don't <laughs> <laughs> i couldn't tell <laughs> you're doing good <laughs> I, I, well, i'm really uh running through my head right now i'm thinking about some things you got my my gears turning so it's working yeah shall we go deeper yeah let me take a little hit though <laughs> okay but my mouth is dry <laughs> oh. oh no jake <laughs> <coughs> I thought you said butter. <coughs> She's heating up. <laughs> She's heating up? She's heating up. Okay, I'm ready. Have you ever wondered why there's a light in the fridge and not in the freezer? I think my freezer has a light. Your freezer has a light? Yeah. Does my freezer just not have a light? Yeah. I'm pretty sure my freezer has a light. I'm about to go check. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me if I'm wrong. <laughs> what did you find out? I'll be damned. <laughs> Apparently, I'm living in the goddamn Stone Age. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Artie's taking your shoes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you got both of them. That's a good grab. You got another one? Because that, that just made you look bad. If time travel is real, and you could go back to any point in time in your life. Oh. Where would you go and why? So you can redo any moment of your past. With the knowledge I have now? Yeah. Well, I want to keep this about you. Okay. Well, outside the obvious answers of going back to the start of Bitcoin and putting my $5 into it, because <laughs> uh, that, that's something I would definitely love to do. But no, I think I would go back to middle school, sixth, seventh grade, and give more effort toward things, just moving forward from my life. Especially when I got into high school, I didn't, didn't try at school at all. Just like pretty much zero effort. Wish I would have tried a little bit harder than that. Even like wrestling, I was okay at it in high school, but I really didn't want to do it. I really didn't enjoy it. Like I think I should have, cause we're on a really good team. Uh, and I think I could have enjoyed that a lot more if I just more actively wanted to be there and something like that. But yeah, if I think if I just applied myself more through my early teens, uh, it would have been life-changing for me in general. So do you think you would have just explored different interests or you just have wanted to apply yourself more at that early age? Uh, yeah, maybe, because I was definitely closed-minded 
uh, in a lot of ways. There's some like saying stuff, oh, I don't never want to do that without ever trying it. So I, yeah, I think I would have loved to try more things and with, with a more open mind. Cause I was like, I kind of had that, you know, angry teen phase too, where I was just, everything sounds stupid. I wonder why we get like that. Yeah, I don't know. So I don't, it's maybe just cause we're figuring out our identity, figuring out what we like, don't like. Uh, Maybe it's hormones. Hormones too. Yeah, definitely. You know, we're getting all this testosterone for the first time in our lives. Uh, maybe that makes us angry. Oh, I know what I would have done. What? Since we're on this, yeah. if I was going to go back to middle school, lift. Lift. Ah, oh, <laughs> that too. <laughs> 100. That's a great <laughs> one. Yeah. You're getting in the gym at six, sixth grade, Houston. Hit oh, the weights. Man. Imagine if we would have got full potential oh my God. lifting yeah. with the knowledge we have now. now oh, be a monster. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But you might be a pro bodybuilder and not <laughs> yeah, a yeah. YouTuber. Let me point. let me down a different path. Yeah. <coughs> <coughs> Have you had any strange or unusual dreams that you can recall? I think I've told you this before. Uh, when I was more of an adult and I was taking like over the counter sleep aids just to knock myself out. And I think I had this problem because I was working out at night and drinking pre-workout pretty late in the day. Mm -hmm. So I was trying to knock myself out. Terrible, never do that. Cut your caffeine off at three at the latest. I took the over-the-counter sleep stuff to fall asleep and I took too much of it and I had like a sleep paralysis situation. Had this dream where I uh, was waking up and going to my bathroom, which was just outside my bedroom, and peeing. And then I realized I had to pee and I was like, oh, I th that was a dream. I actually need to go pee. And I couldn't get myself up. Oh. Like I, and, I, and then I, I knew I had to get up and I just couldn't lift my head. It was very weird and scary because you never want to be sleeping when you want to be awake. <laughs> I eventually do get up, but I think I thought it was another dream or something because when I got to the bathroom, I didn't even lift the toilet seat. I just peed on top of it. Wait, you peed on the toilet seat in real yeah, life? Yeah, then I realized I wasn't dreaming. <laughs> because I just got fucked with that one dream loop. And then, then I, when I actually did it, I didn't realize until I started peeing on top of the toilet seat. Well, how far in did you realize that you were? In <laughs> oh, it was soaked. <laughs> it was because it had like a, it had one of like a, some kind of like a thing around it, so it was like a fabric on. Like a liner. Yeah. Okay. So it just soaked up this liner. Yeah, and then you know I lay back down, and then it's like the same thing. It's like I kind of get into that. I like start falling asleep, and then I'm like I can't get up. Terrible. I didn't like it. It was a bad experience. <laughs> Since we're on that level, do you ever feel like you're still dreaming? Oh, you, are you going Inception on me over here? Yeah, maybe everything that's happening to you right now is a dream. Mm, I think it's in the, an act of futility. Elaborate. Be, uh, because say we are dreaming right now, or we are in the Matrix, I'd rather at least still try to be productive about my life. <laughs> I just don't see the, the point in uh, really too deeply worrying about uh, something like that. That's fair. I guess you can't. That makes sense. You can't really worry about it, but I've always wondered. I could be wrong, but I hear that idea that like when you die, you're living through the all of your experiences at like a very fast, like your brain's kind of playing a replay of your entire life, mm -hmm. but you're living it at a, such a slow rate that mm -hmm. you're like just recognizing it as everyday life. So we could already be dead or dreaming. Um, uh, I have that thought process every now and then, you know, just kind of- like You're almost like you're a spectator. Yeah. Yeah. That would be weird though, because that, then it would almost feel like, or mean that, well, from our perspective as a spectator, it would be like all our decisions already decided. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's deep. And then we, everything is predetermined, which is an idea I don't really believe in, so. But what if you're living in someone else's dream? <laughs> I sure hope not. <laughs> I, I, sh I mean, because <laughs> man, I, I thought I was the main character this entire time. <laughs> And you're telling me I'm in someone else's dream? Could be. Shit. This could all be Artie's dream. Yeah. Nah, Artie's dream is just constantly annoying me 24 7 because he wants all the attention. That's his dream. That was a little deep. I'm going to need you to take another uh, <laughs> call from the <laughs> completely illegal speech. Uh, little one this time. You know, I said that the last. It's bigger than I wanted. Every time. She do be hitting. If you could live forever, would you? Like, what if your world was uh, eternal? There was no demise or there's no death. Would you like to live forever if you had that ability to do so? So there's just basically no end. I'm uh, split on that one. Mm -hmm. What it is to be human is to, to some extent, is to be born, grow up, get old, and die. Who knows what kind of 
mentality people could take on if they could live forever. Uh, I think it would obviously change your perspective. I think it would really change how you act in a lot of ways and in some aspects. So that's why it kind of scares me the thought of living forever. If I'm the only one that lives forever, what about all the people around me growing old and dying? Would oh. I still want to be around? Okay, that would suck. Yeah. If it's just you and nobody uh -huh. else. Yeah, like I think it could make someone like that become a very sad and lonely person, constantly losing the ones you love for an eternity. Would you close yourself off and not get close to people anymore just to avoid the hurt? Man, you really turned this question <laughs> in a way I don't like thinking about. <laughs> Tell me, Jake. Okay, well, what I want is for us to, <laughs> I want all of us to age like elves. <laughs> <laughs> we still die, nah, okay. but <laughs> the lifespan is just extended way. All right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> We're in a Lord of the Rings type scenario here. Yeah, my brother Gimli, he's, he's <laughs> cocking out at a hundred. Yeah. Like, I'll yeah. meet his grandchildren. Yeah. <laughs> Are you ready to hit the deep ones? Sure. To you, what is real? How do you define real? Obviously, what's real is whatever I believe to be real. I think everyone can have slight tweaks and definitions on certain things. No one's alike. Uh, so, so I think one person's reality can be different from another's. So your reality is your perceptions. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Where do your perceptions come from? <sighs> uh, I think, well, yeah, honestly, I think that's like partially, you know, life experience and definitely somewhat uh, just you're born, how you're born genetics. I think there's certain parts and times over your life where you kind of make crucial like thoughts and uh, think certain ways. And obviously people can change and whatnot. So I think I think it's just built over, over the course of your life, right? Uh, what your perceptions are and how you perceive things. Cause I think there can be turning points in your life where you're kind of adamant about one thing and then that can definitely change a few years down the road. So you're to some aspect, people's reality can change. I think. Okay. I think a lot of it is perspective. The only problem I find with this dealing with perspective being strongly influenced by your environment, and you say like your experiences, your experiences come from everything around you, mm -hmm. and that shapes and molds your perception. So that makes it tough for me to define what you would consider, I don't know what the word is for this, but like a true reality. If mm -hmm. your environment shapes your perception, then everything around us is kind of dictating what we perceive and therefore what we believe is real yeah i mean i think it does you know i think if you grew up in like an isolated box right mm -hmm. no human interaction and all that that would definitely like change what that person perceives as reality you know suddenly they could see a talking normal human and think that's like an angel or some mm. but obviously we all at least in the modern age have like semi similar you know beginnings <laughs> uh Yes. Obviously with huge varieties, but you know, we're all born and the family situation can be all over the place, but on the basis level, we have a sim similar social norm. Yeah. For the majority, obviously there, and I don't know how crucial like life stuff is really like, I like to believe it, it would make sense to me if, uh, it did play some, some role, some factor in obviously everyone's perception. And I get why that can be hard to like. Because sometimes you don't want to believe that. Like, you know, man, do I act this way because of this thing happened to me? Or? Yeah, that's, that's the big thing that gets me. Do I believe this because, say, my family believed this, so that yeah. was my environment uh -huh. that brought me up for yeah. that perception. Do I believe this specific thing because my family told me to believe this, yeah, is this thing? Yeah. Or do I hold this true to myself? Do I believe uh -huh. this is real because I think it's real? Exactly. Is it a thought you you kind of came to or conclusion you came to on your own? Or was it planted in my head yeah. via inception? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think everyone has to kind of go through that themselves though. So. Some people just like, though, just maybe don't care. Like, hey, my parents thought that and I think it's kind of a smart idea. And, and or they also just came to the same conclusion, you know? I like that though. I guess that leaves it open up for, for you to decide and determine what's real for you. Exactly, yeah. At least that's the way I like to live because I don't like the idea of I've been controlled in some way or some man manipulated, I guess would be the word. I'm surprised you didn't want anime chicks to be real for you. <laughs> Listen, I like good fantasy, but I live in the real world, okay? Why can't the real world have dragons? I don't know, Jake. Because there are no damn dragons. They didn't, didn't survive. There's no false, false records, okay? It's, it, it, 
they just never existed. They're buried deeper underground. <laughs> <laughs> They're not. They're, they've got How do we never... know? We haven't checked. <laughs> <laughs> the oceans are still mostly unexplored. They could be there. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I got the worst cotton mouth right now. I'm gonna die. I need something. I guess we uh, we talked about wanting to pull away the ego. What is what is the ego to you? What is your ego? If you have a belief on that or a thought on yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Well, the ego to me, uh, it's kind of in a lot of ways who you believe you are. Like deep down, this is this is me, Houston, or this is you know me, Jacob. I think when you strip that ego away, you can kind of look at yourself from an outside perspective more easily. And when I say like who you are is like, you know, it's kind of like I'm Houston, to, I didn't I do YouTube? Okay, that's like kind of how I see myself. I'm a YouTuber, right? <laughs> that's kind of part of my ego, you know? And then I think that's where you see the egos in the gym, the bodybuilders, because they have like some kind of you know, I'm a big, strong muscle man, you know, and I like to know, let everyone know how strong I am. Uh, I think that's where you see that ego kind of get built up, which I think is why a lot of people at the gym need to go through a phase of ego checking themselves. <laughs> if you're getting all those gains, you know, calm down a little bit, bud. Okay. I've uh, been there. Uh huh. Yeah. I distinctly remember when I was at my peak physique, uh -huh. I was constantly judging and comparing my physique to everybody else in the gym yeah. mentally uh -huh. without realizing it. Uh -huh. I was just like, oh, that guy's got small arms. Yeah. Uh -huh. or, yeah. Or he's uh -huh. doing that exercise right all wrong. Uh -huh. Yeah. Blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, realizing now that everybody's on their own fitness journey. journey. Exactly. Yeah. But I think that can be, that obviously becomes uh, part of the, the ego, right? Uh, when on camera, you know, I definitely act a certain way. Character. What are what is a character, right? I think a lot of my characters and how I act and am on camera is just an extension of myself in some way, right? You know, bodybuilder versus that came up when I was a big gym bro, right? Mm -hmm. So I really got the humor and uh, I was kind of a gym bro myself, you know? I was like, you know, into bodybuilding really heavy. So that character was super easy for me to do. But because, you know, I kind of was a gym bro. <laughs> I just took it up to like 11 when I was on camera. I'm not that, I'm not always screaming and <laughs> the over the top in person and whatnot. Uh, I definitely act that way more on, on camera, you know, just cause I'm trying to be, make something entertaining. So if we say that uh, your ego is basically these characters that you play, so your different personas, so mm -hmm. this character of the YouTuber, this character of the bodybuilder, the gym bro, these mm -hmm. different faces that you put on when you're in these different yeah. situations or groups or whatever. Uh, that leaves us to that final question then, that is who is Houston Jones? When oh. you strip away all of these different faces, all these different characters, what's there? Well, who is Houston? Man, you got me good there. Wrapped it all back around. I don't know, like, uh, I guess, I think that's hard uh, for anyone to answer. Uh, honestly and like with full conviction at, uh, at the end of the day who, who, who am I I just I don't know I just, <laughs> that's so hard that is so hard to answer I got <laughs> stumped here man I'm thinking so hard because I, I want to say something but then I'm like like thinking that that I don't fully believe it go on just whatever uh, comes to mind just uh, you know let it funnel out and just see where it takes you without everything all the things that I don't know who I would be, and I don't know if anyone would, because it is so hard to experience. Only on certain things can you experience true ego death, where you can. It kind of gives you perspective on all that. Uh, it's hard for me because I think just how I act and everything has been through the experiences I've I've kind of went and how I've adjusted myself in certain situations, right? And I don't know what what I would be at the 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 base of that. All all that all those experiences kind of gone not shaping me in any way i would like to imagine that just at the end of the day i'm a happy person who enjoys physical activities and creative type outlet type things uh because i think that's how kind of how my brain works i've definitely found a lot of things that i really enjoy uh in my life and i think still without the end of the day with all the egos and stuff built up i would still enjoy those things i like to think my mind's like creative in some aspect. I don't know, obviously I'm not like no creative genius, but like I love 
that kind of thought process that keeps me engaged. That's why I like, uh, you know, same thing like strategy games. It just uh, scratches, it, it scratches an itch in my brain, I feel like. Maybe in another life you were a, a war general or something. <laughs> That is a tough one to answer. How would you have answered that? Who you don't want to hear my answer. That's <laughs> tough. Um, given that is a very difficult question, and just hearing you talk about it, the more I think about it, it's, it's you know it's not the nicest uh, answer. Um, mm -hmm. I see myself as um, an energy that has the potential to unfold indefinitely or infinitely, mm -hmm. but something holds me back or pulls me back from achieving or flowing this whole entire potential whether it be myself self-doubt or self-environment I, I read i heard someone say a week ago or something about is if, if you're not living your own dream you're helping build someone else's um, mm -hmm. when i peel back all the layers of all of my hobbies all my passions and things i do it, it brings me back to the underlying uh self of this energy that wants to be released but is being held back hmm yeah i don't know i i see where you're going with that but it i don't like the held back part well that was just me personally yeah yeah <laughs> you know i i could i could totally get behind that concept but i i think the if i start thinking the the held back part i'm like going a little bit too negative in my mindset of things I will, but if you're just that energy that's like looking to it, you know, it is being released and that is, and it can go in a million different directions. You have infinite directions that energy can go toward and do. Infiniteness. Yes. Infinite, like, if that's a word. I just don't like the idea of like everything so predetermined. I like the idea of you can make it, to some extent, you can make your own future. It's too defeatist to me if, if, I, if I don't feel that way. Well, working with you and, uh, giving my perception of who you are behind the ego because I've had plenty of time mm -hmm. to uh, observe you from the outside perspective of YouTuber Houston. I can definitely say you give me hope and I'm sure you give many other people out there hope that they can achieve their um, infinite power level. <laughs> uh, you, thank you, but you're, you're being way too nice to me. <laughs> way too nice. Oh man, my mouth is so dry. <laughs> I think that's all I have for you. I know we kind of went on a little bit of a tangent there. Uh -huh. um, maybe we draw some conclusions. Maybe we just open the door for many more questions to come. Yeah. <laughs> um, if you like this kind of content and you'd like to see more of it, um, please let us know in the comments below. I don't know if I'm always going to be getting high. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I meant talking. Uh, talk. on a deeper level. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> Maybe podcast stuff. I don't know. Maybe deep talks. <laughs> uh, man, I don't, I don't like getting my onion peeled like that. Not. <laughs> I, I thank you for going on this journey, uh -huh. seeing where it takes us. And I hope we both learned a little bit of something about ourselves. Or maybe you learned a little bit something about yourself today. I'm interested to see the footage played back because I feel, I always felt like I was thinking really hard. <laughs> <laughs> you got me thinking. <laughs> I, I'm well, like, the gears were turning in there. I'm like, damn, I need that box. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thanks for watching. Uh, like the video, share, and all this good stuff. Really appreciate the support. Channel's going really fast, and it makes me happy. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>